What's up guys, it's me Absolute Habibi back with more EU4 content. In this video, we are continuing our multiplayer campaign where we started as the nation of Milan. So far, we've won the Italian Battle Royale, defeated France, and crushed the Ottomans in multiple wars. After I successfully conquered Constantinople, I realized that we could actually form the Roman Empire. Yes, the Roman Empire. Hi boys. I have a question for the men. What the fuck do you want? It should be noted that forming the Roman Empire is changed in the mod that I was using in this multiplayer campaign. It's still hard to do in multiplayer as you need to conquer all of Italy, Egypt, and these states. Making money, chat! Okay, no, but now we have the merchant from this guy, right? We have merchant from Egypt. We pull from Egypt to our node. Uh, right now... Number one, right now we're just the highest dev nation in the game. GovCap. Not too much of an issue. Time to truth break Ottomans. There's not much to see in this war. Ottomans were bankrupt and they accepted our demands almost immediately. Here's where my multiplayer aggressive expansion got to me though, because un unexpectedly, the nation of Crimea, or Hetmanit, which is a formable in this mod, joined the war on the side of the Ottomans. This was a major problem. We were fighting against a Cav nation with low manpower. We had higher morale, but with the lack of numbers on our side, it was very difficult to win battles. Our generals were also highly experienced, which was the benefit of being in straight war for almost a hundred years. But would it be enough? It was time for some diplomacy, which did not end well at first. But eventually, Hetmanit decided to peace out for Max money. Why are you running? Immediately, the Ottomans player began to use the stability hit mechanic to try to get us out of the war. The key here was to get above negative 50% war score before he got us below negative 3 stability. And that wrapped up our war as we overwhelmed the Ottomans with our superior forces and superior numbers. The problem now was to somehow pay off our debt while also going towards forming the Roman Empire. And as I began to recover, Sokoto declared war on us. Bro, let me recover my manpower. <laughs> Initially, the Austrians helped us in our war. However, after we pushed Sokoto out of our territory, I asked him to white peace because I didn't feel that I needed Austria to win the war. Fighting in this region of the world, or the Pyrenees, is pretty one-dimensional. It's all about holding the choke point Once we got 50% war score, our goal was just to stab him and him out for max money, which looking back was probably a mistake because we could have taken uh, the fort provinces and made our next wars a bit easier. However, I just took max money as I just wanted to get out of the war so I could finish getting the provinces I needed to form the Roman Empire. Just when I thought, that's it, the war with Sokoto is over, and I deleted my mercs, Sokoto declared a war on us, truce breaking us. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Any roaches in the chat? This war was essentially a repeat of the first war. We pushed them off our forts, and then we pushed them towards the choke point in the Pyrenees, and then I went for a stab hit again as soon as we could.
This time, before we were even able to reach 50% war score, Sokoto offered us max money to get out of the war. Which of course we accepted, but it seems a bit silly that 2 million lives were lost just for a couple gold coins. Since Sokoto already truce broke, he was no longer able to declare war on us, and the Ottoman player had already left the game, so now it was time to focus on forming Rome. So close. So close. So close. Please break the autos. We can do it. We're so close. Boys! It's time. Oh, oh my lordy. Oh my lordy. Money trade efficiency, 25 reinforced speed, 33 manpower, 1. Unrest, land force limit, galley cost, galley combat ability, stab cost, morale of armies, 20 ICA, 5 discipline, 5 dev cost, 20 production efficiency, 20 tax, 10 tech, 20 core creation cost, max promoted culture. Um, no buildings, no buildings. I really need to build the buildings, but I'm paying off my debts. It's getting paid off. I oh, spent so much paying it off. I just wish I was able to bankrupt at some point. It would have been way better. Look at the buildings we're building. Still, still 14 loans. Cav are pretty yeah. powerful. Arabia declaring war on us was completely unexpected. And not only that, I should mention that this was before Cav was nerfed in the Gecko mod uh, because Cav was really broken. Um, even though we had insane ideas, like if you remember those insane ideas that we had, we still were not trading even equally with the Arabians on an infantry tech, which is absolutely insane. And it's a good thing that the mod makers nerfed Calvary after this game. War was a bit annoying to fight. Lotharingia did help us a bit because he knew we were still in recovery mode. And at this point, Arabia was the strongest nation in the game. He helped us with a couple troops. But... This war was really annoying because we ended up being in this small African, North African tunnel and eventually we got pushed back to Tunis. It's here that we were able to push back the Arabians and fight them on even ground. However, as we started pushing him back, he began to start stab hitting us out of the war. These battles were way too close for comfort, so I ended up accepting his stab hit. This was the first war I lost in this entire campaign, and unfortunately, it wasn't gonna be the last. While we were fighting every single GP one by one, Crimea, Sokoto, Arabia, the other nations were scaling. And even though we did catch up in some of our scaling, we still weren't close to being number one or number two. When it came to army losses, the next closest nation was Arabia, and we had 4 million more casualties than them, showing how many player wars we really fought in this campaign. Anyways, enough of the sad stuff. It was time for war number 2 against Arabia. Let's go. Round 2 against Arabia. For this war, instead of fighting in North Africa, I got Crimea's help and fought in Anatolia. The more open terrain would give us more space to maneuver and take multiple battles if need be. Arabia immediately occupied Egypt while Lotharingia sat in the Libya slash Tunis area and this actually caused for Arabia to call in Sokoto into the war as well as Persia. I knew at that moment that this war was going to be a really long one so I started taking out loans to build training fields, the manpower building, and later on, I took out loans to build the force limit building. The initial battles did not go so well, and the Arabia's cav was dealing still too much damage. We only started turning the tide when I fired my infantry combat ability event through an advisor. It was at this point that I reached 75 infantry combat ability, and we were actually trading equally to the Arabian cav.
I'm actually doing kind of okay now. 85 combat ability is enough to actually make a difference. Way too many battles going on right now on this front. What the heck is going on? This is much better than fighting in that roach tunnel, dude. The way to beat Cavlarp is get a Cavlarper on your side. As Arabia started bringing in more and more troops from North Africa, he began to push back our troops and we began to lose battles, which was really unfortunate because it really felt like we were starting to turn the tide with our 85 infantry combat ability, but it was not enough. Eventually, we were stuck on the other side of the strait, and I just started drilling because there was really nothing else to do, but that's unfortunately when Crimea left the war. Eventually, Arabia enforced their demands, taking all of Egypt. However, that was not the end. It turned out Arabia had taken 400k debt out, and that meant that he eventually bankrupted, and we were able to take back our land. Yeah, we've re dude, this is so pointless. I've recovered my, my African lands, but... That was the last war against Arabia in this entire campaign. Instead, we had two more wars against Sokoto. Um, spoilers, both of them did not end that well. Um, again, the war in the Pyrenees is pretty one-dimensional. You push towards the Pyrenees, you get to the choke point, then he tries to push you back, then you push, then if he pushes you back, you push him back in the Alps, and then you go back to the Pyrenees. And this basically happened two wars in a row. Uh, I'll show you my slum, slum, slum Yeah, I. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> 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 I'm supposed to be tired. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what does that even mean? The one tile retreat. Oh! oh! That was a big stack wipe. Oh, we're being pushed on our last leg. That's what it is, chat. Namaste. I tried my best. My nation's scuffed though, chat. With no mercenaries, no manpower, and no army professionalism, I felt like it was time that we unconditionally surrendered to Skoto, losing our Tunisian lands that we had gotten so many years before. I did have one more war against Sokoto, which was still incredibly insane war, with even more numbers than the first time. Arabia even popped in for just one battle, I'm not really sure why, he just wanted to join one battle. But again, um, I had the same issue, we had better quality than them, but Sokoto was able to outlast us because he had more manpower. A Twitch VOD will be in the description if you want to watch this battle from beginning to end with no edits or cuts, um, or this war rather, because it was a pretty cool war, even though we did end up losing, I still think it was one of the cooler wars that we have fought in, uh, in our EU4 career. Honestly, at the point where I unconned the second time, I felt like I could have kept going, but I unconned because we had reached the 24 hours of the game and I was at this point so tired, I just wanted to go to sleep. So I unconned, and that was that. Let's oh, do wait, time lapse. <laughs> Let's do a quick time lapse. We started as little, little tiny Milan, little tiny Milan, um, and we expanded, um, and we decked on Venice immediately. I wasn't. I don't plan. I don't think decking on Venice immediately was good. It was good uh, because you set back your uh, build up, and it leaves you vulnerable to France and Austria if you go after your Italian immediately. But the guy took uh, so much AE that he had a coalition, so I felt like I had to. I really felt like I had to deck on him in that opportunity. It was just a really good opportunity because I didn't even need to win the war. All I needed to do was just get enough to stab it. I did end up winning the war. I ended up getting 99%. And when he bankrupted, the coalition basically killed him. Um, and 
that was the end of Venice. This right here, this is Austria's vassal. These two are my vassals, and this also is my vassal. I have three vassals here. This is where Pope dies. Uh, it was Hungary who started eating the AI first. He made uh, Naples. Uh, he got a Naples PU, and then he took land from the Pope because the Pope player uh, internet died, and we just took more land from him. Um, and then here, the Ottomans and Hungary doing counter snaking each other. That was funny. But at this stage of the game, we were just building up, you know, getting stronger, building up, getting stronger. Um, I think if France decked us at this stage, we would have been in trouble. But once we formed Italy, I think we were fine because we also had the mission from Milan with the Merc discipline and Merc maintenance, uh, as well as the um, other bonuses that we could get. Um, I think that we would have actually been fine if he attacked us after we formed Italy. But if he attacked us before Italy, we would have lost. And actually, he did attack us after forming Italy, and we took this from him. Then we declare war on Ottomans, and then we win that war. And then we eat up AI, and then we eat up more AI, and we eat up more AI. Boom, boom, boom. And then we eat up more AI. And growing, 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 growing. At this point, we were, I think we were close to being number one GP. We were very strong. Very, very strong Italy from that little Milan really quickly. And then, yeah, we won another war against Ottomans. And then this is the third war against Ottomans, this one. That's the one that ended up costing me a lot because Hetmid joined against me. But hey, I won it in the end. Um, the, or was it the this war? So fourth war? The fourth war. Yeah, it was the fourth war. Oh my god, I had four wars with Ottomans. Jeez. Uh, the fourth war with Ottomans, Hetmid helped him. Uh, but I ended up killing him anyways, and then here's where we uh, eat more of the Balkans, as well as Egypt. Oh yeah, we fought Sokoto here for nothing. We just took max money from him twice. It was so stupid. I took like 10k to get 7k from him. And then we formed the Roman Empire, which only needs this area, Egypt, and Italy in the mod, giving us better ideas. And then we expanded a bit. And here's like where, where we, we would have been really strong. Um... Uh, yeah, the rebels, and then Arabia doing this, and then bankrupting, so we just took it back. And then Arabia had a new player who didn't want to int us anymore. And then we lost to Sokoto, the first war we lost against Sokoto. And then the final war, which is about to happen right now. We built up. End of the Roman Empire. Uh, we still look kind of cute. Hey, Lois, this guy just subbed to this inter-EU 4 player, Absolute Habibi. Cope and see. Thank you for the Prime. Thanks for watching, guys. If you got this far into the video, I really want to appreciate you. Thank you for choosing my content and enjoying my content. Um, and I hope you are looking forward to the plethora of content that is coming to this channel. Um, also, if you want to support me directly, please check out my Twitch channel. Uh, subscribing and donating on there is a great way to help me out um, and allow me to keep making more and more content. Thank you so much, though. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a bro, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.